Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters. Today is our midweek service, Wednesday, the 23rd of December, just two days before Christmas. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you are our God and Shepherd, our provider and our sanctifier. Thank you that you are the Lord of hosts, who made a heaven and earth by the power of your mighty hand, that you choose us to be your children and members of Christ's mystic body. Thank you for the lesson we have learned through the life and times of David, whom you chose to be Israel's greatest king and the under-shepherd of your people. Thank you that you can use anyone whose heart is right before you. You have used Mary to be the mother of Jesus. If you have used Joseph, you have used King David. Cleanse our hearts and use us, we pray, in the furtherance of your kingdom. Help us to listen to your voice and obey your word. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I would ask Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 to 18. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 to 18. Morning, everyone. It's uh, another lovely day. I um, hope this message reaches you safe on Wednesday and that you, you really love it. Um, as Johnson mentioned, it's uh, from 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 18. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a palace of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go and do it, for the Lord is with you. That night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I bought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. When I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pastures and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the name of the greatest man of the earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them any more, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by men, but my love will never be taken away from him. As I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Then, da then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I, O sovereign Lord, and what is my family, that you have brought me this far? 
This is the amazing word of the Lord. Uh, what a great message. Um, just wish you all a Merry Christmas. And wow, hasn't the year gone quick? It's just been amazing. So let's get Johnson back to hear the, hear the last message before all the Christmas stuff goes down. So God bless. Thanks, Johnson. Today, as I've mentioned earlier on, is Wednesday, the 23rd of December, which could be the last message before Christmas. I've decided to share with you a theme, When God Says No. I've decided to share on this theme, When God Says No. A couple celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary with an elaborate party. When the festivities were over, the woman turned to her husband and said, John, you know we have been miserable for 50 years. We have fought every day, disagreed on nearly everything. We can't go on like this. I am praying God will put us out of our misery. I've made a commitment to pray every day God will just take one of us on home. And when God answers my prayer, I'm going to live with my sister in New South Wales. Often we think we know exactly what God ought to say to us. But sometimes the answer is no. In today's scripture, David had three big no's from God. He got a know about his plans, a know about his purpose in life, and even a know about the practice of his faith. David got a know about his plans. After the ark was restored to Jerusalem and peace abounded, King David wanted to build God a house, a temple. The king lived in a fine house of cedar, but the ark, symbolizing God's presence, was still housed in a tent. David felt sure God would want him to rectify that. For David was the most powerful ruler in the world of his day. He was this undisputed master from the Egypt to the Euphrates. He was king of Judah, Israel, Jerusalem, Amnon, and the Canaanite states. He was ruler by governors of over Edom and the Aramean states, and he was chief of Moab. Certainly, now that David was such a powerful monarch, God would ratify his plan. At first, Nathan the prophet agreed, but later told David, God has said no. David can build me a house, said God. I never asked for a house in the past. I don't want one new. The answer was no to David. No is not always the last word. Not every no is from God. Life ends us blow simply because we are human beings and live in a fallen world. God has chosen to allow other forces to work at us for a time. If we set work, free choice is operative. An orderly universe means the same water that quenches thirst down, that quenches thirst, that same water can drown us. Not everything that happens is this life in God's will. Not every Christ dream is willful cried by God. And if we trust the Lord God will bring some good for some of our every calamity. But there are times when God says no. For reasons we cannot see. God doesn't ratify the plans. And when this happens, God says to us, as to David, no, I can't approve your plans. For I have a better plan. Sometimes we want God to fit in our plans. Instead of allowing God to help us take our plans. God said no to David's plans and God said no to David's purpose in life. David had expected to be a shepherd but God said no. I need you to be a prince. <laughs> he was just a shepherd. And that David didn't understand at that time. Think about it. He was the one who was just a shepherd out there. Out of all his brothers, he was the one chosen to become the king. Because that is God's plan. 
He was secure in his father Jesus' house in Bethlehem. His mother, six brothers, and two sisters were there. His life seemed said he was a shepherd, and a shepherd he had remained. That was his purpose in life, but everything changed. From being a shepherd to a king. <laughs> you can't know, you can't believe that. Because that is God's way. Sometimes things change, of course, because times change. A cartoon showed a woman opening a gift from her boyfriend. Oh, Gary, she exclaims, an apron? How nostalgic. Aprons are out. Physical fitness is in. A comedian commented, my doctor said jogging could add years to my life. He was right. I feel 10 years old already. Not all changes are good. A man can complain to a friend. They say your memory is the first thing to go. Who said that? Asked the friend. The man responded, who said what? <laughs> you can see the memory is gone already. So things change just because they do. But sometimes things change because God says no. Some of us would like to remain children. But God says no. You must grow and live behind your own stage of life after another. Some would like to stay adolescents. But God says no. You must be adults and accept responsibilities. Would like life to be comfortable and secure. But God says no. Life is made real only by challenge and conflict and change. God said, no, David, you can't be a shepherd for I have a better purpose for your life. I want you to be a king. You can't be satisfied by being just a shepherd. David got a no about his plans, a no about his purpose, and a no about the practice of faith. David expected to practice his faith in God by building a magnificent temple. He was prepared to spare no effort, no expense, expense to create a structure looming to the skies for God's glory. He wanted to build God a house, but God said, no, I build you a house, a dinner, an everlasting throne. That is what I'm going to build. In our religious life, we want to practice worship our way sometimes would like to enjoy our Sunday service, our Sunday school classes and circles, a few close church friends and stop there. But God says, no, you can't stop there. Reach out. And you find that there are new people who are coming who have never been part of our group, our fellowship. That is God's plan. And these new people bring new wisdom and understanding to the fellowship which you have never used it to, bring others into the church and to our faith. For every human being deserves to know he or she is loved by God and invited to Christian faith. And those outside the church will never know unless Christians tell the story with the words in their lives. Unless we go out and bring others to Christ, things will never work. I know there are some people, because they always think not beyond their own horizons. I've heard so many people thinking that, no, our church is now going to be closed because they are only elderly people. The fact is that the church doesn't belong to people. It's God's church. So we need to reach out and bring others to the church. It is costly in time, effort, and money to practice our faith God's way. But when we do, we see like David, God says no to our way because God is a better way. Because when we are thinking this is the only way, God says no to that way. Because God is a better way. And that is very important to us to listen. Three times in today's text, God told David no. Then David went into the tent of worship. The no still ringing in his ears. What did the king say? He would have stood differently before God and complained, my dear, how could you do this to me, God? But he went and knelt before I'm a powerful man with eight wives and 19 sons. How can God do this to me? I'm a king, a political and a spiritual ruler over your people. And I haven't always been faithful to you, Lord. Don't you know that? I've unified the kingdom. Prayed and sacrificed it all the times. 
I've honored your prophets and even offered to build you a temple and get you out of this flames a tent. How can you say no to the one, to me, God? I think you would have been thinking all these things. But David didn't complain. He praised God. He said before the Lord and cried, Whom am I, O Lord, God? What is my house that he has brought me thus far? He is asking these questions. David is acknowledging that God is the beginning, he is the sender, he is the end of all life. It is so easy for us to be full of our own abilities, our own careers, our own businesses, even our own way that we can easily lose sight of the fact that God, not me, that is the sender of life. It's not about you. Let me tell you one thing. If you die today from this church or in this church, if you are a leader in this church, God will rise up other leaders. <laughs> so it's not about you, it's about God. It's all about God, not you. Those times when we stop and sit before the Lord, we become aware of the real world God's well. We then realize how much greater it is. God commands and we obey. God sends and we go. So the Christian life is glorious, active life as the Holy Spirit does the work of Christ in, in and through us. The danger is not that we do nothing when we sit before the Lord. Rather than the danger is that we get so caught up in our God's plan that we forget about God. We forget who God is. When God says no, it means he has a better way and expects me to support it. When God says no, my very best reaction is cooperation and humility. <laughs> when your marriage is not functioning, when God says no to it, don't mourn over it. Move over. <laughs> because God has got a better plan for you. How can David still believe and praise in the face of God's no? He had learned there is hidden in every no God's great gracefulness. Yes, David, said God. Though I won't approve your plans, I will give you power to accept my own plans. Yes, David, though you cannot be a shepherd, I will make you a king. I will raise you from being from the bush to the palace. <laughs> because that is God's plan. Yes, David, though you cannot build me a house, I will build you a house, a monarch, spiritual and eternal. And one day, God's own son would rule on that spiritual everlasting throne. That son is God's great yes to all humanity. That's what we are waiting for this Christmas. Jesus Christ, out of the lineage of David, he is. It is the work of Jesus to build a house. A spiritual temple, Jesus' temple is the church. He builds it, not this building. The church are people. The church is God's dwelling place in the spirit. Jesus is David's seed, raised up and raised up to establish God's kingdom. God's house, his throne will last forever and ever. That is who Jesus is. As God did to David, God may say no to our plans and our purpose the practice of our faith. But when we ask for Jesus Christ in our lives, we are asking God to give us our single ultimate need. God is serving present with us now and furthermore. What are we saying, brothers and sisters? And when this cry of faith is our prayer, God's answer is never no, but yes, yes, and yes. Because that is what God does. So my brothers and sisters, let us listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. This Christmas, there are certain things God is saying no to us. And we should abide by his no. We should not continuously cry to say, why me God? Why this Christmas? When God says no, Accept a no as an answer from God. 
and then you move on. You follow God's plan. For I have got plans for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you. Which means God has got a plan when he says no to one thing, he has got a plan for your life. And that's what we need to do. He is the same God who can build your life from nothingness to become a somebody. If you only listen to what he says, if you only obey to his commands, when he says no, accept no as a no. And then you follow his plan. Because he said, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you. And we need to thank God for that. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for saying yes to the only question which is of eternal consequences to us. Can I be forgiven, reconciled to God, saved from sin and myself? Thank you for saying yes in the person of Jesus Christ. Now would you open our hearts to say yes to you this very day, the 23rd of December, 2020. Amen to that Lord. Amen to that church. Amen. 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 Let us pray. I just want you to understand that this message before Christmas is there to help you. So that you understand who God is. As you are now coming to the end of the year, let us give our lives to God as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that your promises are true and never fail. Thank you that Jesus is coming back after the time of Jacob's trouble to claim his rightful position as King of Israel. Prince of Peace and Lord of Heaven and Earth. Thank you that by faith in him we have been redeemed from the pit and will be seated together with Christ in heavenly places. We pray for your people, Israel, that men would come to faith in Christ as Messiah and call on the name of the Lord Jesus for their salvation. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. Wish you a Merry Christmas. God be with you. Amen. <laughs>